Good afternoon and welcome to beautiful Hudson Fields at Hazen Union High School in Hard Vermont as your Hazen Union Wildcat boys getting ready to take on the Blue Mountain Bucks baseball action today. Hazen comes in with a record of 8-3. and three. They had a three-game win streak snapped uh, this past Thursday with a 10-0 loss at Enosburg. They are a D2 school, Enosburg is, um, and their record was 8-3 and three as well. Lance Hall with the call alongside the great one, James Salvis. How you doing, James? Oh, I'm doing good today, Lance. Liz on camera. We're going to play two today against uh, Blue Mountain. Made the drive up I-91 from Wells River. They're a D4 school. But we can't take them lately, James. They come in with a record of 9-1. and one. They played six games against Division three teams and lost only one. And I'll give you one guess as to who they lost that D3 game to. Uh, People's Academy. People's Academy. Yes, indeed. So Hazen looking to get back after, uh, like I said, snapping that three-game win streak. Their next games are also Monday at Lamoille. There's a D2 school, but they have a record of 1-10. and 10, But you know what? Throw the records out when Hazen and Lamoille's plays. And then uh, Hazen will wrap up their season Tuesday the 25th, home against PA. Sponsors today are Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Sports Hazen, and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When, when others can't cut it, they can. Doing this for HV TV, channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz, did I give you the intro as well? I talked a lot in there, so... <laughs> James has gone down momentarily to get to the Blue Mountain lineup, and I will hand the mic over to him and let him do his stellar job at play-by-play, -play, as he is much better at it than I. A little conference here behind the plates. Joe Revard coaching right now. Coach Spencer Howard running a little late. The Trooper, Opie, Us Opie Upson down there as well. <clears throat> Beautiful day for baseball. <clears throat> this game was originally scheduled to start, uh, doubleheader was originally scheduled to start at 11 this morning. They backed it up to 1. But uh, hopefully the weather cooperates with us this afternoon. And we get them both in. Slight chance for a shower today. But we're hoping it's so slight that we don't even get it. I believe this is our third home game we have broadcast this season so far for Hazen Union Wildcat basket, Baseball. <laughs> basketball, I'm so used to saying that. Baseball, that is. Baseball. Like Foghorn Leghorn. What do you mean, boy? You don't play baseball? The Widow Hen and her son. <sighs> So I'm going to toss this over to James. He's going to catch his breath for a moment. Opening pitch just moments away. We got Revard on the mound today for the Wildcats. Little shopper behind the plate still. James still nursing that sprained AC, right? Yep. Let's play ball. John Dennis to step in now for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Revard delivers. That is high ball one, and we're underway here from the Hudson Field on the campus of Hazen Union. And that hits him, so Blue Mountain has a runner on. John Dennis at first base. Revard hits him. We're now to stand in is Evan Dennis to face a Revard. T-Rex on the mound. Revard looks at first, doesn't throw. Revard kicks and fires. That is gonna be low in ball one, and John Dennis is gonna move up to second base. Off and running early, Lance. That's right. We haven't seen this uh, a whole lot in any of the games that we've broadcast so far. Yep. Hazen's been kind of a 1-2-3 up and down first inning out against their opponents. So. Yep. Runner on second for Blue Mountain. 1-0 count. Here's the pitch to Dennis. That is over the middle strike. A good pitch by Rivard. Rivard, big tall kid, throws hard on the mound. And that is on the outside corner for a strike. 1-2 and two count now to Dennis. Oh, 
And that is off the, looked like the mask of a uh, little shopper there. Heard a little bit of a clang up here. Yep. Now, James, we've, we're seeing Tyler on the mound today. We saw Andrew the Mauler at Menard last game. Any word on uh, Lyle Rooney? Uh, they're saving him for uh, Lamoyo Monday, from what I've heard. Okay. That's fouled off by Dennis. I heard that uh, he is being used Monday, hopefully, for Lamoyo. So okay. they're going to try and get as much as they can out of Tyler today and go from there. You see Blue Mountain with their last names on the jerseys. You don't see that often. Yeah. Blue Mountain, a nice school located down in Wells River. Uh, eons ago, I DJ'd a prom for them. Great. You, some nice kids down there. Full count now to Evan Dennis with a runner on second and no out. Pitch, and that is ball four. Back to back, uh, well, first walk from Revard, hit, right. hit the first batter. So he's got two on and no out. Revard in a bit of trouble early. As now Colin Punderson steps in. Punderson looks like he could have some power behind his bats. Sure does. Big one three. Tall, muscular fellow. Oh, yeah. First pitch from Revard is in there for a strike. Revard looks at, se looks at second. Now he fires. That is low. Dugout good pick by Little Shopper behind the plate. Little Shopper, very good, as we said uh, last game. Good yeah, athlete, just made, works really hard. Made a great throw towards the end of the game for on a pickoff play at second that uh, thwarted a bit of a attempted comeback by Williamstown in that game. That is inside on the corner. Good pitch. Two strikes, one ball. Now from Revard. Punderson behind in the count. That is low, dropped by Shoplin right behind him. He's got it. 2-2 two -two count. On deck we have Ryan Gardner for the Blue Mountain Bucks. So that is on the outside corner and the count is full yet again from Revard. See if he can get himself out of a little jam. Last thing you want to do is load the bases. At any time, much less than the first. Yeah. And Revard gets Stuck him to him punch out. out. Clutch pitch there by T-Rex. Backwards K, which means he went down looking. Revard now as he gets a much needed out number one on the strikeout. Ryan Gardner to step in now for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Well, Lance, one thing we know, not as windy today. No, not like it was last game. Nice little breeze here, but not like it was last game. Last game it yep. was a uh, pretty spirited wind. Revard's going to step off. Hall Mountain Vortex. The Hall last Mountain game. Vortex was in full effect the last game. Today it's, it's calmed down a little bit. Yes. Shows bunt. Oh, there's oh, a bunt beauty. now. Wow. And that is a perfect bunt there. Perfect. By Ryan Gardner, the Hazen defense was not expecting it, and he's no. going to get to first easy. Everybody laying back on their heels on that one, and nobody in position. And now we've got another tall, muscular, athletic-looking gentleman As up there. As Owen Murray steps in. Revard in trouble on the mound early. Hoping he can roll the double play ball here and try and get out of the inning. Exactly. There is a strike, a good pitch by Revard. It's a good way to start it. Seems like Revard gets ahead in the count early and then last couple pitches of the AB kind of falls behind. Strike two, back to back, good pitches by Revard. As a wise Dennis Eckersley would say, bases are drunk. I think the hitter would like to have that last one back. I think he would, that was a great pitch to hit. And Sweet. Revard gets him to strike out. So Revard gets a very, very big out number two. Second strikeout of the game for Revard. As now stepping in is Hollis Munson for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Blue Mountain looks like they got some kind of like hybrid soccer jersey things going on yeah. here, but they're pretty nice. I like them. I like the uniform. I like the colors. Kind of the old me. LA Rams covers, colors, yeah. you know? Kind of reminds me of the Lamoille Lancers. That too, yep. Same colors. Gold and blue. <laughs> 
First pitch, I believe, was a ball from Rebard. There's a strike, 1-1. One, one. And back. Munson's going to foul it back. Hit that one hard, just yeah. foul. Heard the solid contact there. Time called at the plate. Sounds like the uh, Blue Mountain coach was not happy with something going on, yeah. either at the play or with the Hazen Union Wildcats. One, two, A ball and two strikes now. Low. That is blocked, a good block there by uh, yeah. Shopland. If that got to the backstop, run might have came in, but Shopland exactly. blocks it right in front of him. That's what you do is a... Uh, Good block there by a catcher. That's exactly what you want to do. Keep it right in front of you. Ball doesn't get too far. 2-2 two -two count now to Munson. He said Tyler Reaver. looking for that third strike now. He get is. out of this inning. That one goes by. That's a ball, and the runner's going to stay. Revard quick to get to, quick to cover home plate. Almost caught the runner on second way too over. Almost, but see smart. He thought about Thought about throwing, but smart decision not to throw there. Exactly, because you overthrow that ball it. Ball goes by, and then everybody scores. Yep, full count again. Rivard's got to come up with something big here, and that is fouled off, right? Off uh, over behind the Hazen dugout, and when we headed towards the Hudson soccer field, Munson really making uh, Rivard work. Yeah, keeps fouling off like that. 3-2. Bases juiced. High right. ball four, and Rivard walks in a run. Rivard's second walk of the inning. Blue Mountain up 1-0 now on the walk. Man, with two outs, it looked like Rivard was going to get out of this. Munson kept run. fouling off, though, making him pitch. So He did. As now Ethan Gilding steps in for the Blue Mountain Bucks. This kid looks like he can hit it pretty hard too, Lance. It looks so. like they got a lot of... Uh, something in the water down there in Wells River, yeah? Yeah, must be. Strike one. Good pitch by Reverd. You see he's frustrated as he grabs that ball uh, from Little Shopper. Low. Good block by Shopland. Man, you know, as a catcher, catchers really do have, I think, in my opinion, sometimes the toughest job. Shopper earning his money back there today. Sure is. That kid's got to be black and blue. <laughs> Even with pads, that still hurts. Yeah. I've done it. It's not fun. And that's why I haven't. <laughs> Ooh, inside. that's inside. Rivard almost hit him. I thought it might have been a strike at first, but. So now it's three and one from Rivard. Tyler is in trouble on the hill. Looking for that magic pitch. Sure is. Hi. Ball Watch four, back-to-back -back walks by Rivard. His third of the inning and another run scores. And we're going to see, I think we're going to see Joe go out to the mound. Yep. Joe and Shopland and the infield on their way out to the mound. Let's see if this is it for Rivard. So why is Eddie Harris from Major League would say he's throwing every piece of junk he can think of at him. I mean, what do you say when you're out there? Yeah, you've you've played baseball before, James. What's what 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 can you say to your pitcher out there in this? You, you know, I mean, obviously you want to try and keep his confidence out. Yeah, you yep. know, throw you know, your pitch, settle down, throw your pitch, that type of thing. Yeah, you know, in this situation, you know, just just you and you know, if I was you know a little shopper, I'd say you know, just you and me. Yeah. Let's just play catch. Just take a breath. We're playing, you know, pretend nothing's happened and. Yep. Just focus. That's all. Throw you know. your game. Mm -hmm. And Lyle Rooney is at shortstop today for the Wildcats, okay. Lance. All right. So he is in the lineup. He's just not on the mound. This is a big kid, too. Mm. Big kids must grow on three, grow on trees down there as Tanner Winchester steps in. Yeah, that they grow into trees. <laughs> Both, probably. Yeah. Pitch from Rivard. As that's going to get to the backstop, nobody's coming. Rivard's hat seems to come off an awful lot. 
Must not like that thing. Exactly. I don't know what that hat ever did to rebound. He needs no stinking hat. Doesn't. It's like uh that is a 2-0 and count. Revard in a big jam on the mound. He's got to find something. I think Little Shopper's got to call a different pitch here. Do something, maybe get his confidence up a little bit on the mound. Pitch inside and high, and it's a 3-0 count to Winchester. Revard on the verge of walking three straight. Not the ideal way to start. No. Especially against a big opponent like this. And that is ball four. Revard with his third straight walk on the mound, and he is clearly frustrated. Once again, you know, Blue Mountain comes in there, D4 school, but they've got uh, a great record, nine and one. Played uh, six games against D3 opponents. Couldn't hang against the People's Wolves. No, they couldn't. As it is a 3-0 lead early, thanks to three walks by Tyler Revard. There is a strike over the plate. Much needed strike by Revard. For those of you who don't realize it, of course, PA is James Salvis' alma mater. Yeah, sorry, I'll try not to be biased. <laughs> Ooh, looked like a good pitch that to me. Great. Yeah, I agree. Revard, when you're, you know, when you're a pitcher on the mound in this situation and that's called the ball, like you need that strike call, and a lot of times the umps are going to give it to you. But I think I've had this ump a few times before. Is that his yeah. foul back strike too? I mean, obviously, we we can't really tell how he's calling because he isn't, you know couple more innings we'll see if he's consistent or kind of all over the board so far we've seen good consistent calls you know, calls from from the umpires we've watched so yeah you know if it's high it's been high if it's you know low it's been low so that's fouled back oh i didn't even say who came in lucas welch standing in for the bucks as it is a one-two count revard gonna try and get out of this jam and get the hazen bats up the Hazen Bats are going to have to be prolific today because they're already down three zip. And there we go. There's the strike three he's looking for. And Revard gets his third strike out of the game, but he has issued three walks as it's three nothing Blue Mountain. See what the Cats can come back with here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, you know, Cats down, well, I won't say big, but down a few runs early, you know. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if they can fight we, back here. We've seen them. They can score. They uh both games that we've watched, they've had some real aggressive base running. Once they do get men on, not afraid to take chances. Oh, yes. Let's see, uh, you know, what kind of pitching, what kind of defense this Bucks team has. Yeah, I got to see who their uh, who their pitcher is. Oh, Evan Dennis is the pitcher for the Blue Mountain Bucks. <sighs> like I said, Cats down 3 nothing early, but... As we all know, they can hit the ball very, very well. And I tell you what, James, I gave him a read before the game. Why don't we give the sponsors a read now and uh, make up for our lack of reads in the last game, at least you in the beginning. It. All right, so Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing Blue Mountain. This is Saturday, May 22nd, 2021. And sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen, 472-5522. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-745. 8336. When others can't cut it, they can. So, big thanks to uh, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports and Sperry Lawn Care. For, Love uh, our sponsors. We couldn't be us without them. We sure could not. Liz on camera. Like I Griff said. splitting his time between work and R&R &R today. Yep. Uh, I'd like to give Griff the mention. Yeah, always, always got to bring in uh, the great Griff Lucier on the broadcast. <laughs> Griff was my uh, longtime colleague a couple years ago for uh, yep. basketball broadcasts. I think Griff and I made a good pair. We were like uh, Mike Breen and uh, <laughs> maybe Marv Albert. There you go. Who do we have behind the plates for uh, Blue Mountain? Is number 10? Number Is 10, it? we got Ethan Gilding. It's behind the plate. It looks like Dennis throws pretty hard on the mound. Yeah. Showing some good you heat. see uh, Mike DeMann Baker walking Mike by DeMann behind Baker. us. Mike Baker. <laughs> Stalks by. <laughs> Looking to make another one of those barehanded grabs on a foul ball. Oh, for sure. As Tyson Davison is going to lead off for the Hazen Wildcats. Tyson Davison, we know, has good speed. Pretty good in the field. Yeah, great, great athlete. Comes yeah. from a family of great athletes. If your last name's Davison and you're from Hardwick, yeah. chances are you're a good athlete. Exactly. 
Cody Davison, great athlete as well. You know, a lot of Davisons. Chris Davison. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Kelly Davison. That Jack is over the plate, strike one. Jackie Davison, only back in the day, it was Jackie Silver, her maiden name. Yep. Uh, Jen Davison. Yep. Yeah. Oh, one count now to Davison. Dennis kicks and fires back to back strikes. Tyson's down 0-2 early. Dennis is going to kick and deliver. And backwards, K to Tyson Davison goes down looking. Three and straight princes, wasn't it? Was that three, three straight strike? Oh, yeah. It's now a little shopper, Ethan Shoplin, who's hoping to have a bit better day at the plate today. Yeah, struggled at the plate last game, but was stellar behind the plate. Last home game, I should say. I don't yeah, know what he did at Enosburg. I don't know what he did in Enosburg, but the last time we saw him play here. But lost 10 nothing. so. Yeah, it got to believe, hard to believe anybody did much up there in that game. Yeah. That's a long ways to ride to get whooped 10 zip. As Dennis throws his first ball of the game, set as low to Little Shopper. Now, Little Shopper can be quite intimidating at the plate. May look like a small guy, but he sure is. He can hit. Really can. So he fouls it off back to the backstop. One and one count now. You see, Little Shopper wears the patented Shopland 5. Mm -hmm. Russ wore that. Little Shopper wears that. Take some big shoes to wear that number. Sure does. Next year. Sure will. Pitch now by Dennis. And that is no ripped hard and a hard base hit by Little Shopper. Good to see Little Shopper get a base knock finally. He's got over the second baseman into right. Nice hit. And up to the plate is T Rex, Tyler Revard. Big bat of Tyler Revar. See if he can help his own cause here today and get the team back in it. We know he can hit. See him jotting down what Ethan Shoplin did at the plate today, so that way I know what to say when they come up again. First pitch from Dennis is a strike, or second pitch from Dennis is a uh, strike. One and one count. See what Shopper does over there first, if he's going to try and steal second or not. Dennis looks like he could uh, probably got a pretty good pickoff as well, the way he's throwing. Oh, yeah. Throws pretty hard, so, yeah, it would not surprise me if he can snap a quick one back to first. So that is low, ball two, or no, ball one now. Sorry, it's 1-1 one, one now. They had it one, messed yeah. up on the scoreboard. T-Rex, as we know, can really hit. You just heard the coach say, help yourself. Yes. Which means anything good, rip it. There goes. Nice there goes hit and run. Ethan Beautiful. Shoplin hit and run. Shoplin. He's going to take a big turn at second, but he's going to stay there. Pretty wise to uh, stay at second. I know he yep. wanted to take third pretty bad, but that ball dropped down and kind of didn't really get any kind of roll out there. It didn't. If that had rolled, I would have seen yeah. sending Shoplin, but didn't. And now the butcher, the baker, the home run maker, and Jaden Baker stands into the plate. Just to one face out. Dennis. Yeah, one down. Two men on. Evan Dennis and the JM himself on the mound. Let's see what happens. Dennis looks to second. Now he kicks and fires. Oh, and a Baker squared to bunt. Fouls it off. A one. I looked down at the uh, lineup card and thought it said Buffalo Mountain at the top, and I was like, oh, my <laughs> God. Dennis now kicks and fires. So that is high. Baker Ducks called the ball. Baker not a very tall guy at the plate, so, no. you know, his strike zone is going to be small. As it is a one-and-one one count now to Jaden Baker. Baker squares to bunt again, pops it straight up. And he catches it, and, and they, they throw down to second, and Little Shopper is doubled off. I don't know if that was the best decision by Little Shopper to try and go on that. Pop straight up, easy bunt to catch. You know, Lance, that is and not what you want to do as a bunt. No, and Jaden Baker not happy at all. And I'll give him a nine on the helmet throw on that one. He had intent, uh, aim, and 
velocity on that one. He was not happy at all. He was not, as you know. He'd like to have that one back. This quality of helmet throw, as you'll see. It really is. So the Cats don't get any on the board, despite having uh, runners at first and second. With one down, with, too. Yeah, with that uh, courtesy of the double play by the Bucks. So score remains three zip. We move into the second now. Revard back out onto the mound. Let's see if he can uh, get things settled here a little bit. Yeah, they're going to stick with the Revard on the mound. You know, I don't really know who else pitches on this roster, but I guess, I like either. I said there, you know, saving Lyle Rooney for uh, Memorial Monday. Looks like we got a big, uh, bigger crowd today here at uh, yeah, we got a Dan Hudson crowd. Field. A lot of people have made the trip up uh, from Wells River, the Blue Mountain, you know, yep. Wells River, Greater Wells River area, yep. to support their Bucks. Nice drive up by 91 to get here from there. Yep, they're back to the top of the order now. Blue Mountain is, and uh, a good number of people here do. Rudolph oh yeah, as Wildcats is, as well. You know, is one thing you can always expect here when you're at any sporting event at Hazen. Soccer, basketball, baseball. Home crowd will come out. And it's nice to be able to have crowds. It is. Yes, very good to see crowds again. Little return to normalcy. You know, a little shopper, dirt on the jersey and pants now, you know? <laughs> I always thought in baseball, if you left the game without getting dirt on your jersey or something, then. You hadn't played. Yep. I mean, heck, I knew kids and myself, I would slide even if I didn't have to, just to get dirty. <laughs> Make it look like I did something. As now it's back to the top of the owner, uh, top of the order, John Dennis to lead off. As Baker faced or er, Baker Revard faced all nine batters last inning. As there is a strike. I was gonna say, seemed to take forever for that inning to get over. Sure did. At least the top half of it. Yeah. Now back two. to back strikes by Revard. One of the first times we've seen that today, which is a good sign. 3-0 Blue Mountain lead, top of the second. And of course, with Whoa. the doubleheader that we're playing today, games are only five innings, correct, James? Yes, correct. There's a ball as it is a 2-2 count now. Revert catches that one barehanded on the return throw by Little Shopper. Got a lot of tough kids and tough people around here. You see a lot of barehanded catches. Time now again as the Blue Mountain coach is not happy. Head coach Scott Blood for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Looks like it's not happy with something Suppose that's he has an issue with going on with Tyler's doing on the mound, maybe? Yeah. That's what it sounded know. like to me. Yeah, I guess he has some issues with what Revard's doing on the mound. Tyler pulling a Gaylord Perry out there. <laughs> loading <laughs> up the ball John or something. Dennis. Ooh, that looked really good on the corner. Need that one if you Revard. Full count now. Is it, or is it, you know, could it be something with his feet maybe? or Could be, who knows. Now he's talking to Shopland. Yep, and now he talked to Little Shopper, who was about to go out. Yeah. And Coach Tyler said he I had got it. it. Yep. Now it's a ball. F hmm. Fourth walk of the day for Interesting. Revard. After a bad call on the corner, came, in my opinion. Came to a baseball game. We're seeing a chess match. Yes. Revard. Should have yeah. had a strikeout on that. I believe so, too. That at bat. Look good. You know, very frustrating as a pitcher, especially when you've been in a jam like Revard has today. Right. When you're struggling, you want to. And normally the umps are going to give it to you if yeah. you're struggling. Like you said, the one call can make a big difference. It really can. Revard, snap throw to first. Won't be in time. Good pickoff. Gould keeping him honest over there. Now, is it Gould or Gold? How do you say Asia's last name? Uh, I usually go with Gould. Gould? Okay. That's what I thought. Now, pitch by Revard. Squares to bunt and... John Dennis is going to get to second base easy on the pass ball. By the way, Evan Dennis steps in now. Cash is not looking real sharp today. 
Is not. On both sides yeah. of the ball. Not hitting well. Well, I mean, we only saw a few hit, a Hitter. few batters come up, so we can't really say they're not hitting well. But yeah. I would say on the defensive end of things. They have not been great today. Little shopper, been a little rough behind the plate today. 2-0 count now to Dennis. Let's look a little off. Something looks a little off out here. Rivard fires another strike, in my opinion, over the plate. Good pitch, but it's 3-0 and now. Rivard, another ball. Ball four. He's headed to, Dennis is headed to first base. Fifth walk of the day by Rivard. Rinse and repeat from the top of the first here to the top of the second right now. Yeah, two on early. As I said, 3 nothing lead for the Blue Mountain Bucks. It's Colin Punderson steps in. Rivard, there is a strike. Second pitch from Rivard. That's low for ball, for a ball. 1-1 one, one count now to Punderson. Like you said, it looks like they got a lot of big bats in this Blue Mountain lineup definitely, too. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's hard to tell because Tyler's pitching a little erratically. Um, yep. Oof, and now that's not good either. Runners advance, second and third now. Um, See, Rivard frustrated there on the throw back. Yeah. Thought it was going to be caught. Probably should have been caught. You know, and... I don't know. What, no, is he trying to claim runner interference? I think he was. Rivard was not happy, but both runners move up a base. And Joe's going to go out and try and... Is that Joe or is it Spencer? Spencer's going to go out, right? Is it Spencer? No, that's Joe still, I think. Yeah, it's still Joe. Joe, okay. Joe's out trying to calm him down a little bit. Yeah, Grievard is frustrated right now. And, As you know, we talked about these big bats, but the other thing is Tyler, a lot of, lot of low pitches, a lot of high pitches, a lot of, you know, in the dirt pitches. So he's issued a lot of walks. You gotta yep. wonder if he was, if he was Throwing strikes or potential strikes, and they could get their bats on them. Yeah, you know. And Revert's day on the mound is done. All right. One out in this inning, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, no, I'm no. seeing no outs. No outs. So Revert pitched one inning. Five walks, three strikeouts. Hit batter, three runs. It's Tyson tough, Davison on to pitch now. Tough outing. Very tough Good outing talent. for Rivard. It's not a, even in a five inning game like this, you don't want to see your starter out after one. No. And I would say one and a third, because you know, but yeah. he didn't get an out this inning. So right. just one full inning pitched for Rivard. But, you know, he can go back out and, uh, you know, either make some plays on defense or get his bat on the ball. You got he his bat on it, you know? He could even come back in and pitch later if yeah. need be. He did get. Because uh, you're allowed to go to the mound again. He did get a hit there in the first, so he did. Can, still, uh, can still help his cause. He still can. Keep your head in the game. Although if these two runs score on Tyson, that would go to uh, Tyler's ERA. Right. Because uh, those were runners put on base by Tyler. So. Okay. Cats, once again, they had a three-game win streak snapped uh, this past Thursday up at Enosburg where they lost 10 zips, so they're looking to kind of get back on the beam for that. Upcoming games will be uh, Monday the 24th at Lamoille, and then Tuesday the 25th, their regular season finale here at Hudson Fields, Hayson Union High School, against the People's Academy Wolves. Whoa. Tyson Davison, I have yet to see him pitch, so. I don't believe I've seen him either. Oof. Not a good warm up pitch, but hey, that's why he's warming up. That's right. But like you said, Lance, they have been a little bit rough on defense now. Punderson to stay in. It's a 1-1 count that 
Well, I don't even know. You know what? I'm going to retract that statement, James. Yeah. I don't think we can say they're rough on defense because the bulk of the runs and the runners have gotten on via walks. Yes. So I'm going to retract that statement and say the no, Hayes I defense agree. really hasn't had a chance I agree. to shine, you know? Agree. That ball's hit hard. So Ooh, there's Rebar a play. picks it up. Oh. Throws. Nice play by Tyler to make the stop. As you can see, the frustration yeah, looked like. He really wanted to. Throw that thing to first and yeah. made a throwing error, taking his frustrations out on the mound uh, over on a bad throw to Asia. So bad pitching performance to uh, start now the game for Tyler. Now they are going to send the runner home. Yep, now a throwing error. Both runs come in, two more and runs to Tyler, unfortunately, as it's a 5 nothing Blue Mountain lead in the second. Beautiful play out there on the grab. Just a little wild on the throw. Yep, nothing Asia could do about that. The runner's going to go to second. Ryan Gardner steps in. Punderson now to second as both Dennis has scored. <sighs> Davison. Man, this ref is not given uh, ref ump. This ump is did look a, It did look a hair high. Just a little high. To my completely untrained eye. 1-0 now from Davison. Oh, There's a strike, strike on the outside corner. 1-1 one, one now from Davison. You see Menard moves over to second. Rivar goes to short. The Mahler. Rooney goes to third. High, ball two. 2-1 two, count now from Davison. Still no outs. Yep, still no outs with a runner at second. Pitch from Davison. That ball is hit hard, and that is past Rebar to short base hit. Now we got runners on the corners, but still nobody out. Top of the second, 5 nothing lead for Blue Mountain. As Owen Murray steps in. Apparently he's wearing 24 in the first game and 29 in the second game. Okay. From what I was told by the Hazen bookkeeper. That breeze is nice, though, you know, keeps the humidity yeah, down a little a, bit. Yeah, just a tiny bit of humidity out here today. Yep. Davison now to face Murray. Kicks, fires. Shoplin goes back to third. Rooney almost gets it. Runner on first advances to second. Sure does. The Bucks taking a page out of the uh, Wildcats playbook here with some aggressive base. Yeah, running. as we saw, you know, Williamstown do last game. Only the Hazen defense a little staunch on that one. Yes. With against Williamstown. See what happens here. Good pitch there from Davison. Davison, very good athlete, as we said. Very Close. fast, yeah. strong kid. I think he plays basketball. Play basketball, play soccer. Yep. Good no, kid. No, he does play basketball, yep. Great kid. He is. Swing and a miss by Murray. There's the first out. Down swinging as Davison picks up the much needed strikeout to help the Wildcats cause. As now to stand in is Hollis Munson for the Blue Mountain Bucks, the second baseman. Tall, lanky batter. Very much so. Swing and a miss, late swing there by Munson. Said two on, one out, top of the second, five nothing lead for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Davison now kicks and delivers. Fun. Squares down a bunt and Two runs are going to score. Throwing error by Tyson Davison. Both runs come in. And now I will unretract my statement of the Hazen defense looking a little less than stellar out there right yes, now. Yes, very some, much seen so. Seen some wild throws. Um, very much and, have. Uh, you know, Tyson kind of bobbled the bunt there. Just uh, they are not playing crisp. They are not. We saw them play very well say. against Williamstown. Yep. Might have so. to send Andrew the Molly Menard back to the mound. 
As now Ethan Gilding steps in for the Blue Mountain Bucks. A lot of errors in the field today. Throwing error by Tyler. Those are not Aisha's fault at first. No. If you don't give no, him a good. Nothing they can do with those. Don't give him a throw to catch. He can't catch it. Seven zip now. That is fouled off. Catcher's interference now called on Ethan Shoplin. Things are just going from bad to worse Man, right now for the Hayes and Wildcats. Pinch now we are going to get a pinch runner. Courtesy, or a courtesy runner. runner, as they say. Is this the same nine. thing as a pinch runner? Uh, no. No? What's the difference? Because a courtesy runner, because the catcher would come back in the field in the bottom half. Okay. A pinch runner means the guy who is on first is done. Got to come out. Okay. Yeah. I see. Keegan Freegon is going to come on as a courtesy runner as Tanner Winchester steps in to face Davison. Now, James, I've got to ask this, and I'm not trying to be um, – let me look for the word here. Looking for the proper word, so we'll just call it. Until I find the proper word, then I'll ask a question. All right. I'm not trying to be discourteous to our Wildcats at all. In a regular game, X number of runs scored, and the game is shortened, right? Ten. Okay. Does the same rules apply in a five-inning game? I believe so, yes. Because in a regular game, they play seven innings, and if it's 10 nothing by the fifth, or before the fifth, then it's over. Winchester now, 2-0 count from Davison. That's going to be high, ball three, two runners on. 7 nothing Blue Mountain, top of the second. One down. Tyson fires in a strike there. Three and one now to Tanner Winchester. As always, folks, I'm with the legendary Lance Hall today on the call. And I am going one-on-one -on -one with the great one, James Salvis. So there is a walk for Tyson Davison. Base is drunk again. Doing his usual stellar job on the play-by-play. -play. Lucas Welch standing in now for the Bucks. And like you said, it just, Weird like I said, out. not to be discourteous, as you said, Lance, but it just yeah. seems like the wheels have came off for yeah. the Wildcats in this first game. Yep. And you know what happens at times, you know? You just... You have good games, you have bad games, you have, you know, games where you kind of make the best of it. And this this is one of those, I mean, you got to, I don't know, you got to find a positive somewhere, but. First pitch is a strike, though, by Davison. Good sign. Davison now kicks and delivers. That ball is hit hard on the ground. Ooh, Rivard with the dive, can't get it. Just past his outstretched glove. Two runs score, 9-0 nothing nothing. Bucks. Base hit by Lucas Welch. So it is not going good. And, and this is sort of, as I we, we talked about briefly there a little while ago, when, when Tyler was on the mound, you know, we were talking about how big some of these Bucks players are, and Tyler wasn't really giving them anything they could really hit. A lot of no. pitches low and outside or high or in the dirt. Tyson's kind of, you know, the opposite. The opposite, and they're getting their bats on it. They are. John Dennis to step in now for the third time in just the second inning. He's the leadoff hitter. That ball skips in. Ball one. Yeah, like I said, Dennis, the leadoff hitter, in for the third time today. <laughs> not a good sign. It is not. That High is a pop-up. Pop up. Davison calls for it. He puts it away on the mound, second out. Hazen, hopefully you'll get another chance to bat here. We John have runners, Dennis. Runners on first and second. John Dennis with a pop out to Tyson Davison. You know, I'm glad HCTV started doing baseball games, though. I've often wondered why they didn't in the past. It has been requested a lot over the last few years, and I'll tell you, James, we've gotten a lot of nice uh, 
comments and compliments on the camera work and on the announcing. Uh, sure Mike Demand Baker is thoroughly enjoying it. I got a nice message the other day from Sue Rivard, and uh, we hope everybody's enjoying it. Yes. That is hell. Hard down the left field line. That is going to be way foul, though. Thought a lucky fan was getting a souvenir there. I shouldn't really say souvenir. They got to give him back. But. I think if these guys square up and really get a bat on it, it'd be scary. Yeah. It looks like this is a especially hit this team. big lefty here, Evan Dennis. Looks like he could hit one down towards the Judavine. Judavine Library, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure most people in Hardwick know yeah. what that is. And the and the outfield is playing in a little bit too. They are. So I think if that ball was hit fair down the left field line, see we got out and left. Wyatt Flanders might have been in trouble. Crawford in right and Baker in center. Wyatt playing the deepest of, of the three. Sure is. That ball is hit hard on the ground to third. The Mahler. Scooped up by the Mahler. He throws to first. And the inning is finally over for the Hazen Wildcats. <sighs> I'll take a second to read our sponsors now, unless Lance wants to. Yeah, I'll give it a read. Why not? Sure. Our sponsors today, once again, you are watching Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing Blue Mountain. This is Saturday, May 22nd, 2021. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. HCTV Channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera today. Lance Hall with color and my broadcast partner, James Salvis, play-by-play. -play. Like we said, Lance, you know, let's hope, uh, you know, the Hazen Wildcats can get the bats going right now. Need to get them going and going in a hurry. It's, it feels like it's been forever since we saw them bat the last time. It really time. does. It's, it's the bottom of the second, right? Yeah. And they went one, two, three in the first, I believe. Or no, no. we got some guys to hit. Yeah, we got two got hits. Got some there. guys to hit, but got doubled off. Right, there we go, yeah. Very unfortunately doubled yeah. off. In the so inning. it was a quick inning. Sure and, was. Uh, new pitcher? New pitcher, yes. Trying to s figure out who it is. Number seven. Number seven. Yes, Ryan Gardner. Just making sure I didn't see him on the, on the lineup card at first. And it was like Stuck him down at the bottom? No, he's up in the middle. I just couldn't okay. see it. It's written in pencil. It's kind of hard to read. Uh. As the lineup card, it usually is written in pencil. So that way you can erase and rewrite and all that jazz. Speaking of jazz, the Utah Jazz start the playoffs tonight in the NBA. And you know, I've got to talk about this for just momentarily. I can't remember the pitcher's name, but uh, a pitcher from my Yankees uh, threw a no-hitter the other night. Corey Kluber. Yes, we go. I was gonna, I was gonna go with Kluber, but I want to make sure I had it right. Yes, Corey Kluber, former uh, Cy Young Award winner, excellent pitcher on the Cleveland Indians for a good number of years. I believe that's what the sixth no-hitter throw this season so yes. far in the MLB. Pretty crazy. One thrown by uh, Joe Musgrove. One by Wade Miley, one by Carlos Rodon. Uh, trying to think of the other one. Spencer Torkelson and uh, now Corey Kluber. As uh, looks like Lyle Rooney is going to get up now. First cuts I've seen from him this year is he did not play Thursday against Williamstown. Still no sign of Spencer Howard yet. Joe trots out to third. Yep. So As we got, we've got the trooper. The trooper. Coaching first base. Opie Upson. Every time I say that, I want to launch into the first couple lines of the trooper, but I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> Tro the trooper is, a, is a, one of the seminal classic Iron Maiden tracks. They do a track called the trooper. Yep. Um, and uh, so now Lionel Rooney steps in, taking his first cuts of the day. Like we said, bottom of the second, 9-0 lead for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Lyle Rooney, our ace on the mound. Let's see if he can be our ace at the plate here. And yeah. Get something going for us here in the bottom of the second. Yes. New pitcher on the mound, too. Kind of shocked after, you know, Dennis was throwing fine on the mound, in my opinion. 
with a double header? Do you you know can he can now can he pitch in the second or yes. would you even want? I him think to? that's probably why you would save him. Okay. That that could be the only thing I could think of. You yeah. know, trying to save him and get him some action. some more reps in there. Yeah. Yep. That is hit hard by Rooney on the ground to third. Almost bobbled. He scoops it up. Fires to first and he's out. Throw pulled him off the bag, but he got him on the tag. Nice play by the third baseman on the bobble there to Was. control that and get the throw. Almost dropped it, but he hung on. It's so now Andrew the Mahler Menard steps in. Menard we know has big power. He can hit. I mean, he's a hockey player. That's right. Pitch from Gardner. That is a ball outside to Menard. Back-to-back -back big bats, actually, is Menard at the plate now. Crawford on deck. Hopefully the Cats get something going here. I agree. That is fouled back to Menard. That was almost headed towards Mike Demand Baker for another bare hand catch. I'll bet you he would be up for the task. Bet he would be. No, uh... No Randy Lamston today, though. No. Strike. Menard watches one just at the knees for a strike. See, Menard has Mike Trout cleats on. I, I could not tell from up here. You're, you're good eye. I know, because I have the same pair. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Pitch now from Gardner is outside. 2-2 Two -two count now to Menard. Well, as good as he can hit, I wonder what his slap shot has been timed at. Oh, I bet that thing's a rocket. Talking Brett Hull territory. Oh, yeah. Bobby Orr. Ray Bork. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Just naming off all the famous hockey players. Full count to Menard. Gardner kicks and fires. Hello. Checked his swing. Called a ball. As now, Hayes and Wild. The Hayes and Wildcats showing a bit of life here. Runner on. Runner on for Brandon Crawford. Crawford up. Crawford up. Gardner walks him to put the runner at first. Menard takes off. Hit and run. Oh, wow. And that's kind of the break that Hayes has been looking for. It really is. Because if uh, the pitcher would have come down with that catch, Menard was way up at second. That would have Menard easily would have been, been a double play. So luckily he drops it. Good good catch by the first baseman, though, yeah. to not make an error there. As now Wyatt Flanders steps in with two runners on. Going to try and drive in a run here. Wyatt Flanders. Low for a ball by Gardner. One zero count now to Flanders. Flanders fouls it off. Oh, almost right up to right us. Right up to us, yeah. It's gonna roll back down the hill though. Didn't have quite enough to. I'll tell you, up James, here. when when the Hazen bench really gets cackling like that, all I can think of is the seagulls in the Finding Dory movie. Right. Hey. That is actually, you know, a commonly said thing, Lance. It's not just you. There we go. Menard Throw going to third. third. Menard, he they is got out. Him. If I was Cats Menard, trying to get aggressive. If I was Menard, I would have slid right there. Try and slide there to prevent the tag. Make it harder on the tag. Of course, he might have resorted to his hockey mentality. He was going to throw a nice forearm shiver in there and then oh, realized yeah. he couldn't. Body check. Yeah, exactly. Flanders now. 1-1 one, one count. Two outs now. Pitch from Gardner. That is... Hit high foul over behind, over by the Hazen dugout. And their Three first outs. baseman makes a nice play. Nice play right up next to the dugout. Yep. Up close and personal to the Wildcats. So we go to the top of the third. Blue Mountain up nine zip. Still nothing doing for the Wildcat bats. Lucky to get uh, even what they did if, with the catcher dropping that one ball. Yes. And now I'll take a second to thank our sponsors. Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing Blue Mountain Saturday, May 22nd, 2021. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen, 472-5522. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, we can. 
HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and online at www.hctv.us. Liz providing us with the, the camera shots today. Very much so, and doing a great job at that. As always. And from what I've heard, she makes phenomenal donuts as well. She makes phenomenal donuts. She is the donut queen. <laughs> uh. Try wolfing one down while you're calling a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> Has that happened to you, Lance? It no? happened to me this past year, but I tell you what, I was going with the donut first. <laughs> Tasted you were more really. focused on the donut I was than focused the basketball. on the donut. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense, Lance. Yeah. Uh, no, I uh, often wondered what the viewers thought uh, during mine and Griff's commentary during basketball season. It seems like we gave Liz a hard time. And <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to bring a little life to the broadcast, that's all. Because I try and, you know, have fun while I'm commentating. You know, bring a little humor into so, it. So, yeah, oh, absolutely. you got to have fun with it. Yeah. So the Bucks, of course, you know, showing us why they came in with a 9-1 and one record. Yes. Um, and how they've been able to beat all those D3 teams. Yeah, playing, you know, playing up a division, playing yeah. tougher schedule. And, you know, and, it's uh, taking a toll on the Hazen Wildcats today. Definitely up for the test. At least in the first game, you know. Yeah. Still got another right. one to Turn play. Turn it around, anything can happen after that. Yeah, you know, that's the crazy thing about baseball. You know, it seems like nowadays in the majors, a 9 0 leads nothing. Davison now going to pitch to Punderson. First pitch is a ball, I believe. Looked outside. Pitch from Davison, that is fouled right back to us. Duck at your head. Just over the head of Mike DeMann Baker, kind of off yep. to his left a little bit too One much. One spectator too. covered and ducking. Yep. I know I'm not catching it barehanded. No. If I had my glove, I would catch that thing in a heartbeat. 1-1 one, one count. There's that is shot. ripped out to center. Jaden Baker takes care of it, no problem on the line drive. Nice hit, but Baker right in perfect position to make the he catch. He was, didn't even have to move really. Just put his glove up and put it away. You see, that is not a can of corn, Lance. Uh, no. Because no. a can of corn has to be, you know, way, way up high. Yeah, way yeah, up. You're settling yeah. right under, under, just waiting for it. Yes. See, you're getting your baseball lingo now, Lance. Takes exactly. a little time. Ryan Gardner now steps in. Davison kicks and fires. High, high. ball one. Beautiful day here at the Hudson Field. It is gorgeous. It's hard to remember it's still May, technically. Right? <laughs> this is like, you Got know, another week of May or so. This is like late June, July weather, you know? It is, but it's Temps been hot in the, in the last, like, three or four days. Temps in the 80s and 90s. Today, oh. the humidity's kind of creeping up a little bit. You know, lakes are starting to get warmer. Yeah. Pools are starting to get warmer. I feel like we're watching Babe Ruth baseball, you know? Yeah, right? Full count. Or, not full count. Three, three balls by Tyson Davison now to Gardner. Davison now kicks and fires. Ooh, that pitch looked good. A little low, though. A little low. So that's going to be ball four by Davison and a runner at first. I thought that ball stung out to center that uh, Baker caught. That could have been trouble. Mm -hmm. If it had gone by him, you know, it would have rolled to the trees. Had some good speed on it. Now Owen Murray steps up to bat. Looks like he can hit the ball a ton. With a runner at first. Buck's and showing us that when they have pitches to hit, they yeah. can hit. With a runner at first and one out. Davison now kicks and fires. Strike. That is a beautiful pitch. You hear a loud pop of the mitt there by Little Shopper. Few things better than the pop of the mitt, except for the crack of the bat. At the <laughs> I was going to say level. the crack of the bat. But here it's kind of the ping of the bat. Yeah. Not the same. I like the crack over the doink. Same. Strike two. Strike two. Good pitch there by Davison. You know, that's why I like it when uh, certain hitters use composite bats, hmm. because composite makes kind of like a wood sound. It doesn't right. make like a ting. It's kind of like a crack, sort of. But it's metal. It's just composite. So it's a little bit different material. Davison looking to ring up a strike out here. High. And Ooh, there it is. Strike that, three. Uncle that, Charlie right there. I thought that one was high. I did too, but the Uncle Charlie drops in. Yep. Appeared to be a curveball. Whatever it was, it was the pitch he needed to get that third strike. Two out now. Was a strike. Hollis Munson now to step in for the Bucks. Scoreboard hasn't changed. This is technically the top of the third. It is. Notice that last game happened a little bit. High throw back to Gould on the pickoff throw. He's safe.
You know, Lance, one thing that was crazy to me watching soccer games here is uh, one goal, it seems like it's kind of slanted downhill a little bit. Yeah, the one at the far end is definitely is the whole field is slanted. That's right up. Now little chopper underneath it, and he puts it away. Third out. Now it seems like the Hazen Wildcats starting to show some signs of life in the field. Davison pitching pretty well. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, get something rolling here and make a little bit of a comeback. Maybe punch these bucks out, one, two, three. Or we did, I mean, uh, yeah, okay. No, I'm completely lost, James. Uh, yeah. What we're trying to do is get our bats on it and not go down one, two, three. And yes. Get some hits and get some runs. And I totally. All that is we just rang the bucks up in that inning. Yeah. You know, Lance, I couldn't agree more. Now you know, now you know James, why I gave the mic over to you to call baseball. <laughs> Yeah, it just comes with time, Lance. You just don't watch enough of it. I don't know if there's enough time for me. <laughs> right? At least basketball, you know, basketball is a lot faster paced. It is. Soccer is a lot Soccer, faster paced. Yeah. Much easier. Two sports, I'm sure you know a little bit better. Well, and Yeah, I mean, I know nothing about baseball. And, and like I said, with baseball, it's like there's either nothing happening or there's a everything happening. happening. Yeah. yeah. All like at you, once. Like you said, it could just be like diving into a whole new world of times. And exactly. Lance, did you play soccer or basketball or anything in high school? I did not play officially in high school, but I was a terror on the playground in elementary school. <laughs> Park legend. Yeah. Played a lot of kickball. Um, oh, everybody plays kickball. Yeah. I don't know. I know a few kids that didn't play kickball growing up. I was a monster in kickball myself. Fourth grade, Lance, I kicked a home run pretty much every day. All right. <laughs> kickball legend, James Selvis. Wasn't much of a soccer player, though, I can tell you that. Can we take a break so I can change the batteries? Absolutely. Yeah. Take an air break. Absolutely. Cats up, bottom of the third. Looking yep. to get something on the scoreboard now. Aisha Gould to stand in. So that's outside. Gould, we know, can hit the ball pretty decent. He can. Good basketball player, too. Very good basketball player. I remember watching him when he was a Lakeview Laker. Yes. A lot of Lakeview Lakers have attended Hazen Union. That's inside ball two. I believe some of the better uh, basketball players and athletes from Hazen Union were Lakeview Lakers. Exactly. Some good lineage up there. Yep. Nice little school up in Greensboro. Hi, My kids all three. went to it. Yep. For those of you who don't know, Lance Hall's son, Cody Hall, good athlete. Played, so played uh, four years of soccer. Sure did. Played decent, uh, along with my daughter Joey. I think played. Uh, I think she played a little bit in her freshman year, and then played sophomore, junior, senior year. Uh, yep. Lady Cats soccer. They both dabbled in basketball a little bit, but soccer was their first love. Yep. Both very good at soccer. Very proud of them. Neither of them shabby at uh, basketball. That's hit down to third. Gould's gonna dig it out and get on. He is. Good speed. Might have been an error, but I'll say base hit for Asia and sake of the Wildcats today. And I'll just give props where I can, just because I'm a proud dad, but my other daughter, Lydia, excels in gymnastics, which she was hoping her and Emily Moeller were going to be a part of a gymnastics team for Hazen this past year, but of course the COVID yep. wiped it all out. But uh, if that hadn't been the case, Lydia and Emily would have represented Hazen in gymnastics this past winter. That would have been good, and there's yeah. a strike to Tyson Davison. And for those of you who don't know, Lance Hall, a heck of a bowler in his own right. Back in the day. Used to bowl with your grandfather quite a bit, Lou Wheeler. Yeah. Great bowler. Great guy too. The stories he tell. Yeah. The stories he would tell. Good fisherman. Mm-hmm. Really good fisherman. Yeah, he didn't have to lie about his fish. He caught him. No. He didn't have yeah. to lie about the ones that got away. He could just pull it out and show it to you. Yeah. You know. He was catching other people's fish. Yeah. That's low. Aisha's Gould gonna go is to gonna second. get second. Easy. Now Wildcats showing some signs of life. Bottom of the third. Speaking of Cody Hall. There he is right there. Must have just got <laughs> off work. Yeah. Up here to take in the game. Cody, very good friends with Isaiah Baker and Ethan Choplin. The three of them get together quite a bit. Yeah. And, uh, that ball is hit hard <laughs> foul by Tyson Davison. All he three got seniors, of course, this year. So, yeah. yeah, Tyson got underneath all of that one. Yeah, I was going to say he hit every stitch of that baseball. 2-2 two, two count now to Davison. Ryan Gardner on the mound for the Bucks. He's going to kick and fire. That is hit. Oh, hard back to Gardner. Nice play. 
Really nice play. You know, we've seen that twice. He almost drops it, but yeah. he catches it. Looking like Grant Fuhrer out there. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but. Uh, goalie for the Edmonton Oilers. Oh, yeah. Hockey player. Yep, name rings a bell now that you say. Patrick Waugh. How about yes. that then? Know that one. Tuka Rask. But looking more like Grant Fuhrer. Yeah. Tuka Rask. <laughs> Tim Thomas went to UVM. Little shopper up. Yes. See if he can get another knock here. Runner at second. Pitch from Gardner. Strike, you know. Sometimes you just got to watch the first one, Lance, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of the greatest hitters are going to take the first pitch anyway, you know. Yep. Like I said, it's common, very common. Unless you're Reggie Jackson. Yes. Then you go out and you hit three consecutive homers off of three consecutive oh, pitches. Oh, there's a. Bill's going to go to third. Overthrow. And a oh. World Series game, no less. And Gould is upstanding, is in there standing. As you know, Mr. October. And who did Reggie Jackson play for in that game? The uh, New York Yankee. Yankees. Sure did. Also played for the Oakland Athletics and yes, Los did. Angeles Angels in his career. At that time, the Anaheim Angels, I believe. Reggie. Or the California Angels, one of the two. Seagull squawking over on the Cats bench. Shopper. That ball was hit hard by Shoplin, and he's going to bring home the Wildcats' first run. Little Shopper. Oh, that's still rolling out there. Shopper's going to take a turn, try and go to third, but he is going to hold up at second with a two-bagger. I was watching uh, Asia come in. I didn't see the ball still rolling back there. Must yeah, have got same. by the uh, left fielder. Ethan Shoplin with an RBI double brings in the first run of the day for the Cats, and they got some life. And now up to the plate comes T-Rex. Tell you, I don't know if it's the third or the fourth because the scoreboard doesn't change. I think it's the bottom of the third, though. I believe it is, too. Revard, we know he can hit. So let's hope he can keep this momentum going for the Wildcats. Conference here by the umpires. Yes, a little shopper with a rip into left field. Beautiful hit. Nice to see him get his back going again. Yes, very much so. Two for two today. Single and a double with an RBI. And he has been getting a workout behind the plate as sure well. Sure has. Started off a little rough for these uh, Wildcats and Rivard, but let's see if he can uh, find one here. Seems like Gardner's giving him some pitches to hit. First pitch from Gardner. That is low for a ball. It was almost a sidearm, wasn't it? It is. This guy it seems like he kind of has a three-quarter sidearm release. Kind of like great People's Academy athlete, uh, Joe Bonanno. It's going to show shades of Kent to Colby. Justin Masterson. There's a ball as well. 2-0 now for Rivard ahead in the count. Rivard looking for a pitch to hit. So the Wildcats try and scrape back into this one a little bit. 2-0 pitch. Rivard Sharper rocks foul. it foul. Rockets it foul. <sighs> T-Rex Tyler Rivard at the plate. Looking to help his cats get back into it. Sure is. Pitch driven Big out hit. to center field by Rivard. Center fielder back on it. He makes the catch. Chopper's going to tag up, advance to third. He is. That was Runner a... Runner third uh, with two outs. Solidly hit. Spencer but, uh, Howard is in attendance now. All right. Head coach Spencer Howard is here. He's here. He's here. It's now Jaden Baker. We know he's got a big bat at the plate. Got many shopper on third. Jaden Baker popped out to the pitcher his first A.B. Two outs. That's right. He did uh, an ill-attempted bunt. Yes. That's a strike now from Gardner. Good to see Spencer Howard now here to be with his Wildcats. Second pitch now from Gardner. That is a strike as well. Back-to-back -back strikes to Jaden Baker. Trying to get something going. Looking to ring him up and get him out here with uh, Mini Shopper on third, two Shopper. outs. Shopper dying to come home from third. And strike three. Baker swing and a miss. A mighty swing at that. 
And there goes the bat. Flip of the bat. Off come the gloves. One and a half on the bat throw. Yeah. Five on the glove throw. Ooh, solid spike of the helmet. Yeah. I'll say an eight on that helmet yeah, spike. Solid spike on the helmet. With intent, with force. Yeah. And he managed Although to spike it and have it bounce up, but he didn't hit himself. Yes. Although the Wildcats do push across the run in the inning. Make it 9-1. Thankfully. You know, try and scrape back into this one a little bit. Looks like they're going to stick with Davison on the mound. Tyson's done okay. You he know, has, you know. Get him a few reps, some fritches in here. Only allowed a couple runs, I believe. You know, why not? You're not going to get better by not stepping on the mound. So, like you said, gives him some reps, gives him a chance to, you know, really yeah. get going. As you see, Obi Upson behind the plate. The trooper. Doing a good job back there. Well, little shopper gets his pads on. Trust me, Lance, this was my job in between innings in high school. Yeah. Come out there and warm up the pitcher. Actually did it here at a varsity game and made a, one heck of a pick. <laughs> Throwing the dirt, didn't even look. Scooped it like that. I was like, dang. Over before you knew it. Yep. <laughs> Used to catch back in my uh, prime days, Lance. Shouldn't say prime. I'm still in my prime. You're still in it, yeah. But formative, in, formative years. Yes. Back in my uh, Babe Ruth and minors and majors days, I was a catcher. You were a catcher? Yep. No, I could never do baseball. The ball was too hard and uh, came at me too fast, and I was scared of it. Trust me, when you get hit with it enough times, you get used to it. Never feels good, but you get used to it after a while. Yep. Ethan Gilding to step in now for the Bucks. I prefer the, the, the uh, less Davison. contact sport of bowling. Yes. At least then I was throwing the ball away from me, not, yep. you know, somebody. Not it coming at you. Co yeah, the ball was going away from me, not coming at me. Yeah. Probably just as hard, though. A lot harder. Uh, a lot of people, you know, it's underestimate. Probably hurt to drop it on your foot. Yeah, I never did that. Um, cracked one off my ankle once. That did hurt. There's a big yeah. hit. That's driven out to center. And Baker puts it away, no problem, out there in center. Jaden Baker got a little action out there. Two I mean, Two fly balls, two outs. Really, with a lot of sports, you know, you could whether it be, it, be it bowling, baseball, whatever, you know, somebody can always look and say, oh, yeah, this doesn't look too hard. Well, <laughs> yeah. go down and try it. Right. You know? Same way with, and this is why I have great respect for anybody that, you know, our umpires or our referees or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I could call that game. i tell you what, throw on a mask and a chest protector and go down there and call it. Yep. High pop over behind third, and Rooney puts it away, no problem. No problem there for Lyle Rooney. You know, and with our coaches as well, the amount of time that they put in and everything, you got to have great admiration for them. Really do. A lot of time, a lot of effort. Is now Tyson going to try and set these guys down one, two, three. Be nice to get the one, two, three in and get the Hazen bats back up, see what can happen. Good, and there's a good pitch by Tyson. You know, ultimately, Lance Tyson's throwing the ball pretty well today. Yeah, he kind of settled in there after that first inning. He's he doing did. okay. That is hit hard, foul. Off behind first. Two strikes now to Lucas Welch. Two out. Top of the fourth. 9-1, Blue Mountain. Davison kicks and fires. High pitch there. Looked like that one slipped out of his hands. Didn't quite get enough Looked grip like, on that yeah. one. Two, uh, one, two count now. Davison kicks, fires. Another one rocketed foul over behind first. Headed towards what used to be the Hazen softball field. Or well, I guess it's still there, so. Still the softball field. Oh. Yeah, we haven't fielded a softball team in quite a while. Yep, they play for People's Academy. Right, yep. Uh, who was the last one to play? Lindsay, I know Lindsay Menard played down there. Olivia Davison plays there now too. Okay. As there is strike three by Tyson Davison to end the inning. One, two, three for Tyson Davison's very solid inning on the mound. Bring us to the bottom of the fourth, and I'll tell you what, James, I will give our sponsors a read here. Sure thing. Here in the bottom of the fourth, you are watching Hazen Varsity Baseball Boys against the Blue Mountain Bucks. 
here on Saturday, May 22nd, 2021. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Supports Hazen, and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. You are streaming this at www.hctv.us. You can also find them uh, channel 1080 on your local cable dial. Liz providing the camera angles today. Lance Hall on color and on play-by-play, -play, James Salvis. Yeah, you know, it's been a nice day all in all. It has. Hey, get outside. Looking a little dark behind us, right up over that vortex, you see? You see, yep. James? Where all mountain vortex. The whole mountain vortex. I can kind of came out of nowhere. And, and it will. <laughs> and it will. <laughs> Ooh, new pitcher for the uh, Bucks. Sure is. Try and get him to turn so we can get his number. Number six. Number six, yes. That is, uh, she's the only one that I know of. <sighs> Seems like the, you know, Bucks have switched pitchers a lot here. Kind of giving everybody a few reps, yep. you know. And like I said, you know, two games, you know, you got to. Space Got a chance out. to kind of, you know, experiment a little bit, right. see what's going to work, what's not. Be interesting to see how Hazen goes in their second game with pitching. Yep. Tyler was a little rocky there, but you never know. You put him in, you know, another game. and You know, maybe he's, you know, fixed what he yeah. you know, didn't do good on. I think he had a hit his last time up. He did. Uh, no, he cracked one way, way deep. To center, center and they caught but, it, uh, yeah. They caught it, but. He did have a hit his first time. He got all, yeah. He got all his bat on it, that's for sure. He did. You see Spencer Howard making his way over to third base. As where the head coach is standing, which is not a place that I would want to stand. No. Most of the times that most of the time they make you wear a helmet over there. Mm. But Spencer does not seem phased. I would want full body armor. <laughs> Knight and armor as Lyle Rooney steps in now for Lyle the Wildcats Rooney. to face Hollis Munson. First pitch of the game from Munson. That is cracked by Rooney on the ground to short. He fires over to first, no problem, one away. Ball was hit pretty hard by Rooney on the ground. You know, Rooney, a darn good ball player. He is. Excellent ball player. Andrew the Mauler Menard. Steps in, we know he's got big power. Uses that hockey strength, puts it to good use. Pitch now from Munson. Strike to Menard, 0-1 count. Here in game one of today's doubleheader, 9-1 lead for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Gonna play two. In the bottom of the fourth. Of course, we remind our viewers, doubleheader games are five innings. Yep. Played a couple of those in high school. How, yeah, and how is that like mentally, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, when you go into a game, you're gonna play, most times you're just gonna play one. Yep. Do you try and just kind of forget about the second game while you're playing the first one? And then yeah. after you're playing the first one, obviously you're tired. Do, how, do, you obviously, do they give you a break? Yeah, you get, a, you get a little break. I think between our first game, they actually had a cookout for us. And we had really? lunch in between. And but <laughs> Which isn't common. How do you approach the second game mentally? I mean, you've got to be, you just I, think, win or lose, you've still just got to be tired. You've got to yeah, be no, you, whatever. Yeah, no, you are. You know, two baseball games, especially with as, uh, as long as a baseball game is, you know, it takes takes right. a toll on you. But you just got to try and stay focused. You know what I mean? I think that's the main thing. I would thing. say that would be the, it would be tougher mentally. Uh, you know, physically it would be tough enough, but the mental picture would be yeah. even harder. So that is high. Ball three. Full count now to Menard. The Mahler. Andrew. The Mahler. Menard. Menard. Yes. Three and two, full count. So that is inside, and Menard's going to draw a walk. Don't want to pitch to his big power. Up comes Crawford. Brandon Crawford, another big bat in the Hazen lineup. Good in the field, too. Crawford, pretty good ball player in his own right. As you see over there, the uh, Hazen Union tennis court's not getting any action today. No. Kind of hot. Very, very hot day for tennis. First pitch strike to Crawford. 0-1. My mom, my mom actually designed those tennis courts, Lance. Really? Believe it or not. Yeah. I did not know that. I played a lot of basketball up there back in the day. There used to be four, yep. four rims up there. Uh, her and uh, a lot of basketball. Her and uh, Derek Richardson's dad, I believe, because hmm. it's a 1-1 count. 
designed those tennis courts. That would have been Billy Richardson. Yep. Couldn't remember his name. Who is in attendance today, I believe I saw him. I've seen him walking by a couple times. <laughs> Hi, ball. Snap throw to first. Menard safe. Not going to pick Menard off that easy. No. Nah. 2-1 count to Crawford. Menard hockey player. Quick reflexes. I was going to say out there with the quick feet. Yep. You got it to play hockey. Skating's the hardest part, probably. Foul ball off the bat of uh, Crawford. Sounds like he might be using a composite bat. I don't so think he is, Says a little, little different ting on that one. Yeah, that is a, that is a composite bat, I believe. Most does, popular. Does anybody at the high school level use wooden bats? Uh, very rarely. Now, why is that? Uh, aluminum bats, you know, they're more common. You hit harder. And out at first. Out. Good hustle by Crawford. You know, third baseman bobbled it, was able to scoop it up and make a good throw. Nice Played throw. that one right off his chest. That one had to hurt. Nice throw. Although, meanwhile, Menard up to second with two gone. Wyatt Flanders to step up. Strike one. Two out, 0-1 oh to Flanders. Menard is second. With two down. Flanders takes a swing and a miss. Yes, he does. 0-2. Oh Good pitch by Munson. Munson kicks and fires. Chopper up to the infield. Munson's going to catch that, and that's three outs. No problem. So, all right, I'm going to try and get this right this time. So, because i got to make up for last time because I butchered it so bad, James. Yeah. So we're going to move to the top of the fifth now. Yes. With the Bucks up to bat, Cats will be in the field. Yes. Looking you to stave things off here. Nailed it, Lance. Okay. I messed that last one up so bad I had to. Uh, uh, you know, Lance, just, happens to all of us. I wanted to at least try not to get quite so. Happens to all of us, but I think. Mixed up and tongue-tied. You know, the biggest piece of advice I can give if there's any, you know, other young commentators or any just commentators in general watching, you know, biggest piece of advice I could say is, you know, if you're new to it, you know, just try and get in a groove. Because I remember first game I commentated for HCTV was against Lamoille Union in the Dave Morse Tournament. Mm. Championship game of the Dave Morse Tournament. Right. Doesn't get much bigger than that unless you're headed to the odd. Yes, it really doesn't. You know, probably in terms, unless they're playing PA, biggest regular season game probably yeah. in the Dave Morse tournament. Dave Morse, for those of you who don't know, great, phenomenal guy here in the Hazen community. Longtime sports writer for the yes. Gazette and just a fantastic person. Very much so. If you look up the term good people in the dictionary, it's got a picture of Dave Morse there. It does. It has the picture that's hanging in the gym in the yeah. dictionary. I was just about to bring up the fact that he was a phenomenal sports writer. Excellent. F great guy. I don't think he ever missed a Hazen game. And just a great presence for, for all the players. Yeah. You know, not only the players, but the coaches, the officials. He knew everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And everybody knew him. Yeah. And everybody liked him. Uh, yeah, I never heard anybody have even the beginning of, of anything negative about Dave Morris. No. It was, it was always extremely positive. You know, I never, like, home or away, it just seemed like Dave yeah. never missed a game. It didn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't mean he had to do it for the Gazette. And, and if he didn't know you, he could still strike up a conversation with you, you know? He did. Kind of like my grandfather in that aspect. He said he <laughs> yeah. uh, never met a stranger, just a friend he hadn't met yet. That's right. <laughs> uh, as now we have John Dennis to step in, top of the lineup, as Tyson Davison's going to stay on the hill for. Tyson doing okay sure so far is. after a little bit of a start, but settled in. He's pitching a good game so far. He is. That one in the dirt. Ball one. Little shopper can scoop that one out. Now Davidson fires in a strike. One one count now. Top of the fifth. Nine one Bucks. You know the Bucks have been held scoreless ever since that first inning. You know the Wildcats settled in. Or second was the second. Out. Second was where they got. Second. Yeah. 
High pop to first. Gould. And Gould puts that up. away no easy. Now, uh, no problem. Other question I have for you, James. Uh, same umpires for the second game as well, or do we have a different crew that comes in? Uh, normally, from what I've seen, the same same umps. Might so change positions in the field. I was going to say, that's got to be just as fatiguing for them as well. Sometimes, occasionally, the first base umpire will go behind the plate, and behind right. the plate will go to first. I've seen that happen before. But usually, they'll stay in the same spot. Got some brave people standing uh, back over there in case the pitcher overthrows it here. Now Evan Dennis stands in to face Davison. One out, top of the fifth. Ooh, Davison, that looked like a good pitch over the corner. One out, as you said, Lance. That ball is cranked to left field. Flanders out there, though, can't make the play. Runner's going to go for two and stop there. He is. Wyatt had a, sort of had the line on that. Thought he thought he read it pretty yeah, well. I but thought so, too. Just couldn't quite come up with it. Happens sometimes, though. It does. Hazen's going to get, unless, you know, run rule happens, Hazen is going to get one more chance to bat in the bottom half here in the first game. It's Colin Punderson steps in to face Davison. Davison kicks and delivers. That ball's hit hard on the ground. Rooney's going to cut off Revard. Fire to first. He's out. Runner advances to third as that was the second out. It was. I believe I know that second base umpire pretty well. We had a JV and varsity game on the same day at Fairfax uh -huh. my freshman year. We packed a bunch of like peanut butter and jelly, brought a bunch of bread and stuff to make sandwiches with. Good guy. We said we were going to give him a couple sandwiches, see if he would call better for us. <laughs> hey. Nice guy, though. Don't know if you don't try. If it is uh, who I think it is. Very nice guy. Good umpire, too. We always liked it when we had him in the field. Seems like a good guy. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would say the guy behind the plate, you know, now that we've seen, yep, you know, a number I've of innings. I believe I've had him before, too, yep. Seems to be consistent with his calls. Yep. There's a ball, 1-1 one, one count now to Punderson. Did you see the Seagulls over there on the Blue Mountain side? Yeah. So that is hit hard out to center. Oh, Drops dive in. by Menard, couldn't get it. Run Runner comes scores. in. It is. I, believe, I thought it was 10 to 1 unless two runs scored. I say it's up to 11 now. Was it 9? I don't know. I, didn't, I saw the one runner come in. I didn't think there was two on base. With two down, but I guess it's going to be 11 to 1 for now. Well, they just changed it. It's 10 okay, 10 to 1. Runner goes, tries to go to second, throw down. Can't come up with it. Ball careens around. Yep, kind of a high throw there by yeah. Little Shopper. Even for Rivard to handle high throw. As it is a 0-2 count now to Owen Murray. Like we said, looks like a pretty big hitter in the lineup for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Ooh, hit Davison's going to hit him. Now, Lance, no matter what, that's, that can't feel good. No. Let me tell you. As now Hollis Munson stands in for the box. In the top of the fifth, 10-1 lead for the box with two runners on and two outs in the inning. Davison going to try and work out of this jam and a wave and a miss late swing by Munson. Hall Mountain Vortex moving away. Just keep an eye on it, James. It can come back in an instant. Sure can. Weather up there is just brutal. 0-1 pitch to Munson. That is, is cranked wow. out to center field. Baker underneath. No problem for Isaiah. Uh, that'd be Jaden. Jaden. But I'll bet My you Isaiah fault. could catch it too. Yes, probably. Either one of those guys. They're both good athletes. So we're going to move to the bottom of the fifth now. Once again, this is a double header, so this is the final at bat for the Hayes and Wildcats. Got to so push across nine to tie and ten to win. Yep. 
Take a second now to read our sponsors. You are watching Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing Blue Mountain Saturday, May 22nd, 2021. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain Supports Hazen and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. Streaming worldwide and on the internet at hctv.us and on your cable channels, HCTV Channel 1080. Botch that one a little bit in the HT, HCTV Ooh. part. Well, I always throw in an extra W on the uh, web address. So, Liz <laughs> on camera, um, and uh, James, I'm gonna hopefully gonna get to uh, complete this game with you today. We I got about yeah. 15 more minutes before I have a prior obligation. I'm gonna have to leave too. So for the second game today, it's gonna be uh, just me, folks. Just you. So, but uh, if there's anybody that can fly solo, it's you, James. All right. Well, I have thank you. I appreciate total, it. Total faith and confidence in you. Like we said here at uh, beautiful Hudson Field. Uh, on the campus of Hazen Union High School, home of the Wildcats, in the area code of 05843, Hardwick, Vermont. Hopefully Liz has brought ample power supplies for the cameras. As this game seems to have run a little long for like five innings. It does. For a five-inning game, I figured we'd be done by now. Yeah. Figured we'd already be in the second yeah, halfway. Yeah, we started at 1. It's like 2.30 now. So. Yeah. It's been a long time. Looks like another new pitcher for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Why not? Might as well. It is number 24, Owen Murray. You know, once again, we want to thank everyone who has uh, complimented us on covering the games. Yes. So far this season. A lot I, of people out there thoroughly enjoying everything, so. Yep, you know, I've heard nothing but good remarks, and, you know, this is only my second game I've called so far this year, but I've yeah. heard nothing but good remarks from, you know, about yeah. Lance and I so far. And, you know, I very seldom... I don't think I've ever heard a bad remark about Hardwick Community Television or any game I've commentated or that anybody else has commentated for us. Great stuff. Good Base community up here in Hardwick. Baseball has been requested many, many times over the years. And now it's finally nice happening. for us to bring it to everybody. And let's hope it's something that can continue in the future. Even though Lance doesn't really <laughs> know much about it. but <laughs> I'll have plenty of time <laughs> yes. before next spring. Yes, you will get the hang of it. To, uh, Just watch. Just look up at Dennis Eckersley okay. and listen to the way he commentates and listen to the things he says because he commentates very old-fashioned. Mm. Says a lot of, like, 70s and 80s slang. Okay. So yep, I think you'd right enjoy it. right up my it. alley. Yep, so I think you'd enjoy it. Right up my alley. Says the guy's throwing uh, – trying to think. He says a different word than gas. But um, calls the curveball the Uncle Charlie. When the bases are loaded, he says the bases are drunk. There we go. Somebody hits a home run. It's called hitting a Johnson. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. And Aisha Gould to step in now for the Hazen Wildcats. Bottom of the fifth, 10-1 lead for the Blue Mountain Bucks. <laughs> like I said earlier, almost said Buffalo Mountain Bucks. <laughs> Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, those who don't know. I bet you, though, here's a guy who would probably comment. Yeah. Mike Baker. I've, uh, hey, Mike, I've got to leave uh, for the second game. You want to come on and do commentary with James? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Demand Baker wears a lot of hats around here. Does not do commentary. <laughs> Says he'll pass. The guy could step up here and probably knock it out of the park. I bet he could do better than probably me. First pitch was a strike to Aisha Gould. That's a ball outside to Gould. But I bet I bet if we ever had the chance to get Mike on a game of basketball, oh, boy, I bet be he would fun. do a great job. That would be a lot of fun. Obviously, he can't you know, commentate a boys game since right. he's the assistant coach and the head JV coach, but he could do a girls game. That's outside, ball two. Two-one count now to Gould. It's so like I said, Owen Murray, the new pitcher for the Blue Mountain Bucks. I'll tell you, some of the funnest basketball games that I commentated on, of course, Elliot, uh, the Big Red Machine, Kimball came up with me for a number of them. You know, I tried to get different students who, if they ever wanted to come up, you know, to do it. Yes. And uh, one, of the, one of the ones that I had the most fun with, I got uh, Casey McAllister to come up yep. to commentate a boys game with me once. And she was real nervous. I'm like, don't worry about it, Casey. I'll just kind of feed you questions and lines and just go from there. And... At, by the end of the game, when the game was over, she's like, you know, that was really a lot of fun, and she thanked me. And I had a lot of fun doing it with her as well. 3-1 pitch outside. Gould watches it. You get, yeah, the you, different, you get the different perspectives and everything, and it's it's a good time. You know, I was really, you know, I felt the same way, Lance, the first, you know, game that I commentated, you know, by myself for, um, you know, for basketball. Like I said, yeah. you know, championship game of the Dave Morris Classic. Right. Big game, playing yeah. the Moyle. And it was me and Griff on the call. And... 
you know, it was just kind of getting in a rhythm, you know, getting yeah. to know Griff, his commentary style, you know, trying to feed him questions, you know, and just us trying to bounce ideas off each other exactly. as there's a strike to Gould. And exactly. then, you know, Griff and I found a rhythm, and we made a great team throughout the I season. I thought so, too. You and him Cut even got to do a game that year. That's right. That's I was not in attendance for that one. That was against Stowe. That was a girls' game against Stowe. Was it Stowe? Yeah. Yeah, it was good to hear you and Griff back on uh, commentary because I know I used to watch the games. It was a second strike to Davison. So I know I used to watch your games and hear you and Griff call all the time. Good times. Although Elliot, good broadcaster too. When he Elliot was up. awesome. One-two count now to Davison. Elliot, heck of a ball player too. Mm -hmm. Great athlete. Until I believe Isaiah Baker might have broken it, but... He used to have Hazen's all-time record for threes in a season I with 86. Believe, I believe Isaiah. Broke it. Go back. They yell back. Gould does, in fact, get back. But I believe Isaiah smashed that. Well, I won't say smashed it, but I think he broke it. So Isaiah and the Kimballs are good friends as well. Yes, they are. Neighbors up there on a... Davison. Davison watches one for a strike. Strike three. three. Strike three. Flips to the bat to the shopper. Sure does. The little shopper going to stand in now. RBI double drove in the only run in his last AB. Big time hit. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. 10-1. Bucks lead. Almost said Wildcat lead. Well, like you said, after the second inning, we have held them scoreless. Pretty much, except for that one last inning. Yeah, 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 exactly, yes. But yes. besides that, they were, you know. I mean, they were having the our way with us through the first two, and then. Uh, After that, you know, we were playing pretty even ball with them. Bucks come in with a 9-1 and one record. We're 8-3. and three. So that is blocked. Gould's going to head to second. So that gets back to the backstop as Gould's going to swipe the base easy. Not a problem at all for Aisha Gould. Good speed. as it is a 1-1 one, one count with one down in the top half of the fifth. Bottom. Bottom. My fault, guys. It's okay, it happens. My advice, James, is try to get into a rhythm. Yep. Ooh, oh, big time cranked hit. out to center field <laughs> by Shopper. That's a hit. That'll. I think Shopper's gonna Go score. Go all the way. I think he's gonna. Huh? And Shopper's going to round third. He's on his way home, and right. Shopper's got an inside the Parker, and he dives for fun. Could you expect anything less Absolutely from the little another. Shopper, Ethan Shoplin? Three Big for three hit. on the day. That Single gives... in his first A-B. RBI double in his next A-B. Now he knocks in a two-run inside the park home run for the Hazen Wildcats. Gives the hometown faithful a little bit to cheer about here. Yep, gives him a little life here in the bottom half of the fifth. 10-3. 10-3. Wildcats scraping back in a little bit here. Ethan Shoplin, finally, like you said, Lance, good to see his back coming around. Huge hit, yeah. He has drove in all three runs today because it counts as an RBI on a home run because you drive yourself in. So Big time at bat for He the is shopper. three for three with three RBIs. If I had to pick a player of the game for the Wildcats today, gonna I'm going to pick a little shopper. Little shopper's a player of the Even game. Even though, you know, they're not winning, so. Right, still. But in my opinion, it's got to be little shopper. He's today's MVP. Now, Rivard, we know he can hit the crap out of the ball, too. Mm -hmm. Knock the cover off it. Sure can. I still can't. That was a rocket off the bat, a little shopper. It's pretty much, oh, well, not. I wouldn't say quite straight away center, a little bit left center, but, man, definitely hit to one of the deeper parts of the field. Definitely. I think the deepest part of the field is out there to right. Right. Rivard straight There's up the a middle, hard hit. snagged by the second baseman. And there it is, two down. We've already having a bit of a rough day today. Tyler has. Let's hope he can get things going here in a, for the second, second game. game. Just kind of erase this one from his memory, do a little bit of a reboot. And As now, Jaden Baker, the butcher, the baker, hopefully the home run maker. So apparently he hit one at Danville. A couple weeks ago, yep. 
And that is a deep field, too. It is. I don't know if you've ever been to their baseball field, Lance. Once, yeah. That's a dead center. It's like 450. It's like I don't know many people at the D4 level in Vermont High School Baseball that are hitting at 450 to center. No. That is low. 2-0 and count now to Baker as Mike watch, watches on intently. <laughs> Although I was hoping that ball would stop rolling for Little Shopper because I knew if it was rolling out there, he was going to get it inside the parker. I mean, he never even slowed down. They were waving him the, the entire way. He did not. There's a strike call. But, no, I I was hoping because if it rolls into the bushes, that's a ground rule double. Ah, okay. So I was hoping it would stop before that so he could get his inside the parker. Which he you did. Know, good good speed by, you know, yeah, Little he Shopper. Yeah, he was well. digging it all the way around. He was. Back-to-back -back strikes now to Baker as it's a 2-2 count. With two outs, bottom of the fifth. 10-3 lead as Blue Mountain could be on the verge of a W here. And he went around, and that is Strike going to be the ball game. The game. Well, folks, that'll do it for the first game here at Hayes and Union. As always, I'm James Selvis, along with the legendary Lance Hall. We had Liz on camera. Thank you guys so Should much for our, watching us today. Let and me give our sponsors one more read here for this game. I'm assuming they're probably covering the same game as well, Liz. But it's Hazen Union, uh, Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing Blue Mountain. It's Saturday, May 22nd. This has been game one, uh, Blue Mountain winning 10-3. Our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Supports Hazen, and Sperry Long here, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. HCTV channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera, James Salvas doing play-by-play. -play. I'm Lance Hall. I will not be here for the second game. James is going to take over. I'm going to hand the mic to him. So as we resume action here uh, in the first game, 10-3, uh, top of the sixth for the Hazen Wildcats. As I thought it was going to be a five-inning game, so I thought that was the ball game. We did a whole wrap-up and everything, Lance Hall and I. But looks like we're going to stay with this one. Some raindrops coming down now. So my apologies on that one, folks. So now at number 10, Ethan Gilding is going to step in for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Tyson Davison is going to stay on the hill. First pitch from Davison, that bounces in. She saw in the bottom half of the inning, guys. Like I said, Ethan Shoplin with a rocket out there to center field. What a shot. First pitch from Davison was a ball. Pitch number two, that one bounces in too. 2-0 two count now to Gilding. Big turnout, as I mentioned earlier, here at Hazen Union, nice day for a baseball game and a big, big turnout. That is low for ball three, three straight balls by Tyson Davison, who all in all has pitched a whale of a game since he came in in relief, as Lance Hall would say, whale of a game. There's the pitch. Fired in there for a strike by Lance Hall, uh, Tyson Davison, my bad. Happens to us, happens, you know, live TV. <laughs> even though we're not live right now, but 3-1 count from Davison. That's smoked over to first. Aisha slides for it, can't get it. I believe that was a in catcher interference call on Ethan Shoplin, so Gilding is going to get first base. And now Tanner Winchester is going to step up. Davison stays on the mound. Davison kicks and fires, and he fires a strike right down the middle. Great pitch there by Tyson Davison. Davison turns and fires a pickoff to first. He's safe, though. Tyson just keeping him honest. Winchester at the plate. 
1-0 count. Or 0-1 count, I should say. Davison fires in another strike, and it's an 0-2 count now to Winchester. Two really, really good pitches there by Tyson Davison. So the rain is starting to come down here at the Dan Hudson Field, which is not good for the equipment. So there is a ball, 1-2. Davison kicks, fires, that is rocketed up to left field. Flanders is gonna move over and underneath it. Almost misreads it, but he puts it away out there and left. Nice work for Wyatt Flanders, no problem in left. Looks like that Hall Mountain Vortex isn't gonna move away for us this time. Now Davison fires another pick off to first. He's safe. Just keeping him honest. Davison kicks and fires. That is hit hard. Right in between the second and first baseman in the gap. Base hit. He's going three. Menard's going to eat it at second. Now we got runners on the corners with one down here in the top of the sixth. John Dennis steps in now for the Wildcats. One down, 10-3 lead for the Bucks. Davison kicks and delivers. Davis squared to bunt. Shopper would, tried to throw down to third to get him. Could not, run comes in. 11 to three lead for the Blue Mountain Bucks. <sighs> Well, a couple raindrops came down for just a second, then it stopped. Thankfully. One out count now to Dennis. There's a good pitch by Tyson Davison over the middle. One one count now to Dennis with one out in the inning. That ball is hit hard. Rivard plays it off his chest, scoops it up. Throw in the dirt. Gould could not do anything with it. Throwing error. Dennis is going to get to second. On the throwing error, run's going to come across as it's a 12 to 3 Blue Mountain Bucks lead. As now, Evan Dennis is going to step in. Big lefty kind of hit the ball pretty hard today for the uh, Wildcats, or for the Bucks, I mean. I see what Lance was saying now with a lot of dead air. Davison kicks and, kicks and delivers high. Caught by Shopland. One oh count. Davison kicks, delivers, that is hammered out in the left center field gap. That is gonna get down just past Wyatt Flanders. Evan Dennis rockets what may be a three bagger. Run comes in on the double, 13 to three lead for the Blue Mountain Bucks in the top of the sixth. That ball was roped into the gap, and it's an RBI three bagger for Evan Dennis. Good backup there by Tyson Davison, though, to make sure the throw doesn't get through. So now Colin Punderson steps in for the Blue Mountain Bucks. Oh, 
That ball is flied to second base. Menard and underneath it at second base puts it away. Two down in the inning. Dev uh, Dennis has got to stay put over at third. Now stepping in, Ryan Gardner for the Bucks. Davison kicks, fires, and gets a swing and a miss for strike one. Thirteen three lead for the Bucks. Top of the sixth. Oh one count. Davison. Kicks, fires, almost hits him. Ducks it, 1-1 one, one count. Davison now kicks and delivers. High and outside for ball. 2-1 count now. Davison kicks, fires. Wow, that looked good. Three and one now from Davison. To Gardner, er, yeah, to Gardner. He reached for it, but that is ball four. So a walk now by Davison. Thirteen three lead for the Bucks. Owen Murray steps in. Two down in the inning. Runners on the corners. Davison kicks and delivers. Shoplin, good throw this time down to second. And Rivard misses the tag and drops the ball. So he's safe at second. Now two runners in scoring position for the Wildcats. Tyson looks awful tired on the mound. So he's entering his fourth inning. Tyson's gonna kick and fire. A high ball. Is it as a 2-0 count, I believe. That's rocketed foul down the third baseline. 1-1, one, one actually. So not 2-0, 1-1. One, one. Davison's going to kick and deliver. That ball is ripped up the middle. And, and he is out at home plate. Good relay throw. Second run is hosed. Good tag by Ethan Shoplin, who has had a heck of a game behind the plate today. Let me tell you, three for three at the plate has looked good defensively. Shoplin has played very, very well today as the Hazen Bats are gonna try and keep going. See if uh, Blue Mountain sticks with the same pitcher here. And they're not, Ethan Gilding is gonna step on the mound, so it seems like every inning they're changing pitchers. Blue Mountain, as we know, very good D4 baseball program. Play a lot of D3 teams and have had a good season so far. Nine and one on the year and have played six, six of those games against D3 opponents with 
Their only loss being against the People's Academy Wolves. It's number two, Sam Demers is gonna come in to catch. By the looks of it. Once again, humidity not quite as bad today. Been hot the last couple days. So, I believe there's going to be a sub now for the Wildcats. I think Elder Hart, they said he was going to come in and hit. So, we'll see. No, 10 for 7. So, that means Jacob Davison has came in for Andrew Menard or will hit in the place of Andrew Menard. because Rooney is up now for the Wildcats. Been pretty good in the field, hasn't? Has been pretty quiet with the bat today. That ball is ripped to shortstop, almost bobbles it. Rooney, good speed, and he's out at first on a bang-bang play. Lyle Rooney with good hustle. As now Jacob Davison, who is going to come in and hit instead of Andrew Menard. So Menard's day is done for the first game for the Wildcats. Jacob Davison looks like a big, big bat. For the Wildcats, there's a strike. That ball is hit hard on the ground. Second baseman throws to first. Davison is retired. So two down in the inning. It's now Fenton Meyer is going to come in. He's hitting in the place of Brandon Crawford. Pitch to Meyer. That's ripped on the ground to third, and that's through for a base hit. Base hit. Fenton Meyer with a base knock for the Hazen Wildcats. And now Alder Hart steps up for, for the Wildcats. He is hitting in place of Wyatt Flanders. Alder, as I'm hearing now. That is fired in for a strike from Gilding. Looked back to first, didn't throw. Meyer is going to be safe at first. Gildan kicks and fires, that's outside. Meyer is gonna get in there and he's gonna take second with ease for the Wildcats. That is fired in there, really good curveball for a strike, one one count now from Gilding. To Alderhart. As that is strike three, Hart strikes out. So that's going to do it for the sixth. Go to the seventh. 14 3 lead for the Bucks. I'll take a minute to read our sponsors. 
Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain Supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial and streaming on the web, www.hctv.us. As it looks like that's going to do it for game one. 14-3 win for the Blue Mountain Bucks. As we are going to take a break here, folks, and we will be back with all your action from the second game. <laughs> 